Hello everyone, Robert Rambles here, and welcome to World of Warcraft The Burning Crusade Classic. And thank you so much for joining me here today. I'm really excited to be starting a new playthrough, and we'll be doing things a little bit differently than we've ever done before, and that's the part that I'm really excited about. I felt like I've needed some change in my World of Warcraft, uh, something new, and that's kind of hard to come by in Classic, so what I've decided to do was to concoct a set of my own hard mode rules. Uh, rules that I've chosen for myself, this is not going to be a traditional Iron Man run or anything so specific as that. Our rules for this one are pretty simple and are as follows. We are going to have permadeath, so if we die, we will be deleting this character. The important thing to mention here is that we're going to be on a PvP server. This is Benediction, and this is a US East PvP server. We're going to be flagged the entire playthrough, so if we get killed, which could happen in 10 minutes, we will delete the character. We are going to have to craft all of our own armor. That's for slots that we can craft for. So chest, legs, belt, shoulders, helm, gloves, and boots. We will be crafting those. Anything else like rings or trinkets and weapons, we can still get those from questing or from wherever else we might get them from. But the armor, we will be crafting all of our own armor. Floating name plates and floating names and health bars are going to be turned off. I've played this way a little bit before for immersion. And if you guys have seen any of those videos, or if you've done this yourself, you'll know that without floating names, creatures, enemies, NPCs, and WoW are kind of hard to see unless you're paying really close attention. So that's going to add a layer of difficulty to navigating the environment and to combat. We'll have to be really attentive to where enemies are at. We're not going to be able to use those floating names as a guideline. And so yeah, I'm really excited to get into things here. I hope that you guys are as well. So let's go ahead and we'll just jump right in. And something else that's important to mention is that in my 15 years of playing WoW, I don't have a lot of experience on the Rogue class just in general. I haven't played much of it in retail, haven't played much of it in Classic, I've dabbled a little bit. So it's going to be mostly new to me. That's going to add challenge as well uh, that I'm pretty excited for. Let's go into, we need to go into interface and into names, and we're just going to turn NPC names off. All right, everything is off. Auto loot is on. Okay, we should be ready to go. Oh, PVP flagged. There we go. We've enabled player versus player. This is my first experience ever even creating a character on a PVP realm, so... We will see how this goes. What brings you here? The balance of nature. Greetings, I am Conservator Ithilane. My purpose in Shadow Glen is to ensure that the balance of nature is maintained. The spring rains were particularly heavy this year, causing some of the forest beasts to flourish while others suffered. Unfortunately, the Nightsaber and Thistlebore populations grew too large. Shadow Glen can only produce so much food for the beast. Journey forth, young rogue, and thin the boar and saber populations. And if you are new to the channel, first, welcome. Really happy to have you here. Secondly, I do tend to read all the quests and lore objects. I might not be reading every single quest because I've read these before on a Night Elf Warrior, uh, but we'll be reading most of them, so hope you're into that. So my first impulse is that I would really like to get skinning uh, as early as possible. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to complete the first couple of quests and then I'm going to go get skinning. I don't think you can learn leatherworking or those kinds of professions until you're at least level 5. I could be wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure that's how it is. That you need to be level 5 to take the actual crafting professions. So we could just wait till level 5 and then go grab skinning and leather working. I feel like it's a little bit of a waste because obviously we're leaving some skins just on the ground. And that's never good. So what we might do is maybe I'll do this one quest and then I'll go get skinning. And then even though we won't have leather working yet, at least we will be able to start collecting skins. That's probably what we'll do. So 
So taking a look at our abilities here, we're using Sinister Strike to build up our combo points and then Eviscerate, our finisher, is going to deal damage based on how many combo points we have on the current target. Now the combo points are specific to the target from what I understand, so if we have two combo points on a boar, we kill him with those two combo points, we lose those combo points. They don't carry over to our next target or anything like that. So that is important for us to keep in mind. Uh, we also have throw. We can throw a throwing weapon. Currently we have a light throwing knife. Definitely need to find some more boars. I'm already kind of feeling the pain of not being able to skin these guys. And not only are we going to need coppers for skinning the skill, we're also going to need copper for the skinning knife. Which uh, could cost us close to a silver. I don't remember exactly how much it is, but... I don't think it's uh, especially cheap, especially early on in the game. We need like... Oh, we need night sabers. Okay, I'm fighting boars when in reality we need to kill all these night sabers around us. Too bad we can't start building up combo points with our throwing weapon. That would be neat. Uh, whatever we grab, we're going to sell, so let's just always grab the most sellable item. Remember, if it's gear that we can craft, we're not going to take anything from a quest or anything like that. We're going to make all of our own uh, armor pieces. Encrypted Sigil wants us to go talk to our rogue trainer. Balance of Nature. Thinning the younger population of creatures here in Shadowglen was a good start, but there is still work to be done. The resources of the forest will be depleted too quickly if the problem is not addressed. Killing nature's beast is a necessary evil for the good of all who share the land. Venture into the forest and slay mangy nightsabers and thistle boars. Good luck, friend. All right. And kind of the thought behind that armor rule where we're going to craft all of our own armor, the thought I had was like kind of a random one, which was that what are the odds that somebody gives you a chest piece or a pair of leggings for a quest? And what's like the realistic probability that they fit you? Greetings. Kind of a random thought I had, but it kind of it led to this idea that maybe we would just craft all of our own armor. And that would be kind of a, a layer of difficulty we could add to the game to make things more interesting. And to propel me to actually craft armor. Let's see, thank goodness you are here, rogue. Strange news has traveled to me through the whisperings of the forest spirits. The mysterious woodland protector, Terendrella, has returned to Shadowglen. The dryad's presence has not been felt in the forest of Kalimdor in years. Something is surely amiss if she has journeyed back to this land. Uh, we'll go see her, but for now we're going to find our class trainer. And then we're going to sell everything in our inventory. 
Hello, I'm glad you found me. I was thinking that perhaps you'd got lost on the way here. Nothing really new has happened in Shadowgun since I sent you my sigil, but I'll leave all the information gathering to you. Speak to the rest of the people around Adrasil if you'd like. Until then, know that our kind are needed more than ever in this tenuous time. Peace with the other races can fail at any moment. And there is much talk about members of the Horde looking to sow even greater seeds of distrust. Remember that. As you gain in power and feel more prepared, come back to me here and I will see about getting you some training. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and learn stealth. Goodbye. Now let's put that somewhere where we can easily hit it. And let's do the same in reverse so we can pop out of it whenever we want. Same button. Alright. Just want to find somebody to dump these items on. And then we'll get we'll grab this guy's quest over here. How may I help? A friend of mine named Ivoron usually visits me at the same time every day. The strange thing is that he hasn't been by today at all. He's several hours late, in fact. I admit I'm a little worried. Ivoron spends a lot of time over by the cave to the north. Good luck, friend. All right. With that being done, I'm gonna run us down to the town of Dalinar. Maybe somewhere a little past there. I'm pretty sure I can pick up at least pick up skinning so that we can start skinning the stuff we're killing and we're not just leaving it on the ground. I don't think I'll be able to get leather working yet. I think you have to be level 5, but as long as we can start collecting the materials, uh, that'll make me feel a lot better. So I'm going to use a little bit of editing magic and then I'll just be able to hearth back right into this area and we will pick up there with the ability to skin the enemies we're killing. See you guys real soon. Alright, we've grabbed skinning. And now we are back in Shadow Glen. So we have skinning and we have our skinning knife. And we even have some coppers left to spare. Ah, the great outdoors. Something evil is brewing in the forest of Teldrassel. Look long, look long the hills to where the peaceful Firbolgs used to dwell. They have deserted their homes and are amassing under the name of the Gnarlpine tribe. Only the corruption of wicked Felmoss could cause such a transformation. The Grells and Grelkin have infested the area and are threatening the residents of Shadow Glen. Engage these Grells and Grelkin and see if they are indeed caught under the enchantment of the wicked Felmoss. Collect eight Felmoss. Alright, so the Grelkin are right over there. Let's track some of our quests here. We don't have a stealth opener yet, so I don't really think there's a reason for us to be creeping around in stealth right now. So I'm not going to.
think we'd probably stand to turn the music up a little bit. It sounds like it is down some. Yeah, let's go ahead and crank that up for a little bit more immersion. And guys, let me know if the sound settings or even if the gamma, the brightness needs to be adjusted. I know this is a dark area and sometimes YouTube darkens things more so than they start off as. So let me know how everything is. Alright, that's all the fell moss we need. What is nature's call? Your service to the creatures of Shadow Glen is worthy of reward. You confirm my fears, however, if the Nels have become tainted by the fell moss, one can only imagine what has become of the Naropine tribe of Furbolgs who once lived here. Should you find yourself in Dalinar, seek out the knowledgeable druid Athridus Bearmantle. He shares our concern for the well-being of the forest. Uh, we're going to grab the mail because we're going to be selling all the gear that we get handed. We're going to be crafting our own armor, as we've said. So we're going to take the thing that sells for the most. And now we need to find mangy nightsabers and thistle boars. And we have to be headed towards the cave to the north as well. So yeah, let's let's head north while we keep our eyes open for some different types of nightsabers and boars. Here we go, there's a young one. Up ahead there's a mangy night saber, so let's keep heading this way. Lucky for us, they're still non-aggressive until we engage them. Oh, can you not skin things that are less than level five? I didn't know that. So it seems that some of that effort I put in running out there might have been wasted. Because yeah, you can't skin these guys. The more you know. I'm sure a lot of you guys already knew that. Maybe it's a starting area thing, like once we are out of Shadow Glen, maybe then we'll be able to skin everything. It's a little weird, but I guess it makes sense in a way.
I know we don't have to think about it for a little while, but I'm already kind of thinking about specs. And I kind of just assumed I would go combat spec, but uh, I would be willing to hear arguments for other specs. I just like the idea of dual wielding swords, basically. I, I kind of like that feel. Uh, we could turn this in, but let's go ahead and go further to the north here and check out this cave. Find Ivoron by the cave to the north. It doesn't say in the cave, it says by the cave. Though I am wondering, if we had turned this in, would we have gotten a quest for these spiders that are up here? These spiders are aggressive, so we're going to have to probably take some on anyway. The Grelkin is not aggressive, which is weird. Okay, I'm, I'm not seeing anyone by the cave. I guess we're going in. This is kind of against my better judgment. Hmm, yeah, I don't think I'm going in here yet. I don't think I'm going in here yet. Let's just get out of here and rethink this for a minute. I feel like there are spiders out here. It, it'd be weird for us not to have a quest to kill them. Especially because they kind of seem like they're overrunning the area. And if he's back inside the cave, I would definitely love to have a kill quest to help us get back there. And it doesn't say he's in the cave, it says that he is by the cave. But he, I didn't see anything pop up nearby. Unless we're looking for a body on the ground. Then we're probably going to have to be a little bit more observant. But let's just turn this in and, and see what it chains into. It's bound to chain into something. I, am listening. I think we can take the, the, the cloaks, right? Because we can't craft a cloak unless we're a tailor, right? Not oh, he has nothing else for us, but somebody over here does. I think we're going to equip that cloak. Because I don't think as a leather worker we can make cloaks. Here we go, Webwood Venom. I came to Shadow Glen to observe the Webwood spiders that dwell in the Shadow Thread Cave. They are cousin to a much smaller variety of spider. I believe the world, the world tree had a profound effect on them, and I would like specimens to study to confirm this. Goodbye. He wants some venom sacks. Okay, now I feel much better. I don't really feel like I need to keep auto attack up on the bar, so I'm going to get rid of that. Inventory is full. <laughs> of course it is. If you guys are new to the channel, I am notoriously bad about my inventory. Notoriously bad about it, actually. Uh, let's see, is there anything that I could just drop? Let's just drop these for now, instead of just running all the way back, and maybe that will be okay. Oh, here's the marker on the minimap for a good friend. So yeah, he wasn't in the cave, but he was 
in this little crevasse here between the hills. He looks okay. I'm so glad you found me. How did you know I was here? Well, our mini-map told us, to be honest. Ugh, I was bitten very badly by a spider named Githilis. Githys, Githius the Vile. While exploring the spider cave very close to here, I am sure I have been seriously poisoned. You must help me. Hurry, I'm so dizzy. That could be a different problem. I wouldn't mind getting the experience buff, but I wish I could get rid of this Bonfire's Blessing, just for the sake of some of the hard mode rules. Uh, the fact that I'm trying to increase the difficulty of the content a little bit, is that this will sometimes proc, and when it does proc, it will basically one-shot whatever it hits. It's It seems to do that no matter what level you are. And so I would definitely be fine with having the experience bonus that a holiday event brings, but I, I wish I could get rid of this... As you can see, I can't just click it off like we might another buff. And I, I'm curious if there's any way you guys know of to get rid of this. And know that it does hurt me to be leaving a lot of stuff on the ground right now. I'm, I'm not really happy about it. But it's either that or run back, and early on I think we're okay. This will be my big warning that I need to put a post-it note on my monitor that says, Hey, empty your bags. And we're gonna have to buy, we're gonna have to buy more bags. Like, really, really quickly. These guys have a little bit of a poison they can inflict on us. We'll have to keep an eye on our health in here. Remember, if we die, the character gets deleted. See, that was that proc again that went off and basically got killed that guy from half health. Just... Bang. Half your health gone. Pretty sure the big one's gonna be up and around. And unfortunately, I used my hearthstone when I went out to train skinning, which proved to be kind of pointless. So we're not going to have it as a means to quickly get out of this place. Which means I'm going to hope that everything doesn't respawn behind us, but it is WoW Classic, so the respawn rate is typically pretty cranked up. Okay, we have all of our venom sacks. We just need Githius the Vile back here. And if we can get her without pulling an ad, that would be ideal. I'm just going to clear both these guys out so nothing untoward happens when we pull the big one. Like, maybe she can call for help if these guys are alive. I, I don't want to leave any of them up right here.
I'm gonna try to do a four point eviscerate. See what that does. Oh, well, it would have to hit. It would have to connect. <laughs> it just missed. Oh, we didn't need this. Oh, we didn't need her yet. We have to talk to somebody. <laughs> we, we're going to be back. All right, well, that's fine. Absolutely fine. Some things have respawned. Yeah, basically all this stuff out here has already respawned. Health is getting a little low. Alright, I'm just going to try to run it back. If I have to have the game tell me that my inventory is full again, my OCD will be in full effect and I will probably lose my mind. So let's just hoof it back to town really quick so we can turn this in and empty our bags out. And probably spend our first handful of silvers on some bags, like, as soon as we can. I don't know if we can buy any here, but once we get into Dalinar, uh, the next town down here, we'll definitely be able to get some bags. And yeah, that's going to be a huge priority as far as how we spend our money. Okay, let's take the dagger, that we can definitely equip. So we can't dual wield yet, can we? We have to train that, don't we? A webwood egg. Now that I have the spider's venom, I'd like some live specimens to study. Unfortunately, capturing a living giant spider is more than I can ask of you. And a giant spider is more than I can handle myself. But if you can find an unhatched egg, then delivering specimens will be much easier, and I can arrange for them, uh, arrange for the unhatched spiders to be contained. Okay. What is this quest here? The friend in need, we need to talk to Durania Silvershine. Now, she was the one who sent us out in the first place, wasn't she? Where was she at? Somewhere. Oh, over here, apparently. All right, let's hit a vendor first. We might actually want, like, some food. Let's just grab that in case. We have pretty good health regen out of combat right now, but it's going to reach a level where that ceases to be the case, I have a feeling, so...
I was wondering why I hadn't seen Ivoron yet today, and I've always warned him about those spiders. We may be able to help Ivoron, as I know an antidote that should help with the poison. It requires some ingredients, though, before I can make it. I'll need hyacinth mushrooms. You can find these growing under trees. Let's see. The last ingredient may prove most difficult from the very spiders that poisoned Ivoron. Collect webwood ichor. F seven hyacinths, four moon petal lilies, and one webwood ichor. Del Did she say where the lilies were at? Growing under trees are from the Grell. Only grow around watery pools. Okay. Only around watery pools. So there's a watery pool over here. Maybe we head that way. And she said we could find the Hyacinths under trees. Or from the Grells. Well, here are the moon petal lilies. Looks like these are quite abundant, so that's the easy one to get. I have a feeling the mushrooms might be a little more difficult. It had said that they'd be underneath trees. Or from the Grell south of here. Well, alright. I don't really want to go south of here to fight Grell. Uh, but we may have to. Okay, here's what the mushrooms look like. Let's get a good look at these. And then we need webwood ichor and an egg. I'm assuming the, the ichor is going to be a random drop off of any of the spiders here in the area. So let's fight some of these guys and we will gather the hyacinth mushrooms as well while we do that oh there's the ichor okay well <laughs> that was easy i'm still kind of assuming we're gonna have to go back into that cave to fight the named spider so i don't really want to go in there right now to get the egg I kind of just want to wait on that until we're sent back in there to kill the big spider. She said the grell came to the south. I wonder if these grell up here, the random ones, are going to have a chance to drop the mushrooms as well. Let's find out. Yes, they do.
All right, looking for one more, and we could turn this in and see what it chains into next. Here we go. All right, let's turn this in and see. Thank you, Loon. You have gathered these ingredients so quickly. The antidote is ready. Please see that Ivoron drinks it. There is something that you should know. The antidote. It will only remain viable for five minutes. You must get it to him in time. Speed be with you. Okay, we are going to hold off on this. I think that once we turn this into him, he's going to want us to go in there and kill that named spider. And then we're going to get the webwood spider egg as well. But we're going to start off with that next time, guys. We're going to take a little bit of a break here. This might be a little bit of a longer episode, I feel like. I'm going to try to keep them to about 30 minutes. See if that works for us. Thank you guys so much for being here with me today. I really do appreciate it. I appreciate all the support that you guys give. It does mean the world to me. So take care of yourselves out there. And take care of each other. And we will see you back in Shadow Glen sometime soon. Bye now.